anything else. <laughs> now, Jared made me a little nervous. Uh, Revelation 19. Uh, and so uh, I was like, uh, I wanted to make like gestures to him or something, but I just kind of stuck with it. Lord knows best. Uh, Revelation 19, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse. Revelation 19, in the first verse, the Bible says, And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous is, are his judgments, for he hath judged the great poor, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and have avenged the blood of his servants in her hand. And again they said, Alleluia! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen! Alleluia! And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as, and as the voice of many waters, and the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Dear Lord, we thank you, we praise you for your goodness and watch care. We praise you for the group that's gathered here this morning to glorify your name and to lift you up. Lord, we understand and know the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I shall be in the midst of them. We claim that this morning because of your goodness and honor. Lord, open your words to our hearts, make it meaningful to our spirits, Lord. And we be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now, some fairly familiar verses of Scripture. Uh, I've seen them taken out of context at times, and I've seen them uh, used in different ways. But one thing you can say of a surety, if you understand the sequence of Revelation or not, is that this is a time of praise a time of giving him honor, a time of lifting him up in every way that would be possible and giving the Lord the due praise that he deserves. Now, if you know your Bible, just before this text, the great whore is judged. The great whore and all her daughters are judged. Now, we as Baptists sometimes are not too hesitant to judge the great whore, the Catholic Church, the one that has filled the earth with her filth for many, many hundreds yeah. of years, but we're a little bit more hesitant to judge her daughters. Mm. But you will see that this does both. He judges the whore, he judges her little daughters, and at the end, there's great power and praise because of that. Now, uh, there are some of the whores that would believe somewhat similar to what the Bible teaches, but it does not matter if they're just similar. That's right. Now, if you go into many churches, and I use that word very loosely, they'll look like the whore. They'll have their red curtains and their crucifixes and all that stuff that goes with that, and they're almost blatant about it. <laughs> and again, I, I'm just being honest with you, and I hope I help somebody, but the Methodists even had in their traditional hymn book a pledge to the Church of Rome. Mm. And... Uh, we need to be aware of that. You know, it uh, uh, seems like in everything else we're, we're willing, even some, and, and people use this so loosely, false Baptist church, we're ready to throw a brick at them, but we don't, we don't warn people of their situation. Now, that's the thing it needs to be done in a heart of love. You know what? I'm fearful for people that are not trusting truth, aren't you? And I'm fearful for people uh, that, that take false things that come out in baptismal regeneration. If it comes from Presbyterians or if it comes from Catholics or if it comes from Campbellites, it's the same doctrine, is it not? Right. 
And so we need to be very fearful and very careful of this thing. And when it's finally put away by the Lord God of heaven, and you know, we can criticize all day long, but when it's put, around, put away by God, it's done. And, and, and he does that very thing, and he judges her. And what is the result? It's great praise and great honor to the Lord God Almighty. Now, let me stick this in to start with. Praise comes when sin, the great whore, is put away. Right. Now, we have to believe then, when we're able to at least put some sin away in our hearts, we can praise the best. Now, you know what? I've seen people singing, and me, Donna, was, uh, I was looking on Facebook the other day, and uh, uh, all these southern gospel groups come up, and it is, it's not, you know, and, and a lot of southern gospel was strange to start with. We want to defend it, but it, it was a little bit, and it wasn't all biblical, I'll put it that way. And now I, I notice this one group, the women's is wearing breeches. You think God ties up with that? And, and the men, they look like they're old as I am. It looks like they're trying to be teenagers. Them weird hairdos and stuff. You know what? I personally believe that, that's, that God's not within a mile of that. And so we, we need to begin to understand and know we have to set some things aside if we're really going to praise. Even when it looks good, even when the words are good, we need to learn to set some things aside if we're really going to praise. And for at least a year and a half, I have been burdened by the Almighty to understand and know what praise is, and then when I understand what praise is, carry through with it. Do what He's bidding us to do. And so... One of the huge things, and, and this, is my, this is my thing concerning the great whore and all her daughters, what they are are religion. Mm -hmm. And religion will send a soul to hell. Mm -hmm. Even good, sound Baptist doctrine, mm -hmm. if you're not saved, it will send a soul to hell. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we find that these are put away, and so worship can begin. Praise has a new level. Giving glory to God is now done in an environment when falseness doesn't exist. You know, can you imagine a time when, when you can testify of the goodness of God and not have one element of pride involved in that? that that's an amazing time to me. That, that's something that I can't comprehend. So if you want to praise this morning and give glory to Him in the way that He does work in our lives, set pride aside, set falseness aside. In the first verse of our text, after these things, the judgment of the whore, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Now I want you to see the first thing they praise him for is salvation. If you have nothing else to praise him for, or if you think you don't, you do. Amen. But if you think you don't, your salvation is sufficient. You can praise him for that if you cannot praise him for one other thing. Mm -hmm. And that won't go into the breath of life and the food you ate this morning and the good air we breathe and the beautiful sunshine that's around us, a building that we don't have to set out in the cold in. And that, you know, if you look around, you'll begin to praise it. Man. But just salvation. I don't have to face death fearfully. Sometimes I worry about how I'm going to get there. Yeah. But I'm not fearful of it. I'm sincere in that. I'm, I, I do not fear death. And, and, and so we see then that these, with sin set aside, they were able to, hallelujah, very, very genuine. How many times have you seen that in the Baptist church? I've been a Baptist for 33 years, and I dare say the closest I've come is an amen. <laughs> mm. Right? And you know, sometimes you've seen these preachers not just preachers and men of God in church, they leave the A off and amen. You know, they look grunt at the beginning and then say amen. That's not the way it ought to be done. Are, you, are we talking about God or are we talking about just a little something that we're pretending to do? Amen. You know what that means? It means I 
agree. I agree with you, preacher. You're preaching it right. Amen. And, and so we see then that, uh, and, and, and this alleluia, it literally means glory forever. Alleluia. That, that's what we need to do. We, we need to say your name is going to last throughout, forever. And when we finally get there, we'll be able to do it. Right now, you get tired. What, right now, your voice gives out. Right now, uh, you get hungry and you want a noontime meal, but then it won't be that way anymore. We'll have the flesh aside and we can tr truly do this forever. Now notice the qualities that he <laughs> prays, that they praise him for, his salvation, his glory. That means his light, he, he, him shining in the darkness on our behalf and honor. You know, we need to honor his position more. <laughs> That, that's where the honor comes in. You know, he's God. He is so holy Amen. that really we can't get our mind around it. Right. So clean and beautiful. Mm. You know, that's the biggest problem with the great horse. He's tried to picture God, and that's an impossibility. Mm. And, and, and then, in, in addition to that, his honor is, I mean, we, the wisdom of God is untouchable. Do you know how to make a world? Do you know how to make a universe and set every star in place just where it's supposed to do? Do you want, do you know how to take this planet Earth, the only one where life exists? They say Saturn may they may, may found some bacteria up there sometime. I'm, I remain unconvinced, but just at enough distance from the sun, at the right exact angle, spinning at the right speed, rotating at the right speed, that it, it fosters life, it maintains life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a very smart individual. That, that's a very smart being that is able just to throw that out there and cause it to be. He deserves praise. And he, 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 he is past our understanding. And yet we sit by and we're like, bumps on a log and never realized the very being that we serve. He deserves our honor and power. And that's not his power. That's our power. You know what? I'm not a very powerful individual. I, uh, the older I get, the quicker I wear out, right? Mm -hmm. But what little bit I got it needs to be dedicated to him. Mm -hmm. Would to God that I didn't have to work and I always worked to I will always work so that these people don't be hungry. But you know what? It'd be better to be full time and just spend my, t my time, my power, whatever I have left, to the praise and the glory of God. Mm. That, that, that's what, it's your power. It's not His power. It's your power giving some level of praise to the Almighty. Women, you know where your power can be best expended? On them young and true raising, give under the power of God. That way they'll know that this is right and not what that junk down at the schoolhouse is telling them, right? Yeah. That, that is an unusual power that you have. <clears throat> under the Lord our God, we need to praise Him. Now, for true and righteous are His judgments. That means the ones you don't understand. When somebody wraps a car around a tree that you love and that you and that you have respect for, that it's still true. Diane's cousin Gene, I think he was 25, drunk as Cootie Brown and wrapped his car around a tree down here and out into eternity. You know, I've thought about it many times. I didn't understand it. Now I don't know Gene's situation, but he sure didn't speak of the things of God. You know, that's sad. Within 40, four, five years, his mom and daddy was dead too. You know, I, I think, but you know, I don't understand it, but I have to take it as a fact. True and righteous. That was the best thing that could possibly happen. Right. See, we don't we, we don't we don't grasp things like that. But if you really believe God is sovereign, you have to. Mm -hmm. And, and so we see then that 
uh, this great calamity, people dying and, and, and great judgment and, and cast into a burning fire and God calls it, God's people calls it good. It, it's a wonderful thing. It, it's a great thing. For true and righteous are his judgment. He had judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. You know, uh, I, I guess either one's okay, but I prefer the Fox's Book of Markers. Uh, but uh, imagine all those individuals being avenged. Uh, the very one that took their life had to be apologetic about it. That's good, ain't it? That, that's a wonderful, glorious thing. And, 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 and people of God, it's coming, and you will witness it if I understand this text correctly. And again they said, Hallelujah! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. Now I think that's very unusual. And remember this, every soul is eternal, both the lost and the redeemed. Mm -hmm. So there's your smoke coming up. It ain't the Catholic, the Catholic Church is gone. But those people that, that trusted in that mess, smoke's rising up, and the Bible says it's, pra it's praise to him. Right. I can't get my mind around that, but it's a good thing those people went where they did. You know what? In the flesh, I feel sorry for them. But it's a good thing. Yeah. See, don't you think sometimes the reason that we can't say, Hallelujah! If we don't look at way the things the way God does, mm. I really, I really believe that, and, and, and it takes the steam out of the engine. And if you want to praise Him, if you really want to be in a situation to praise Him, you must look at things the way the Almighty does, mm. and set this other stuff aside. And this event, notice the reaction of other people around them, and the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne and said, Amen, I agree, you're right, hallelujah. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. Even in preachers, and I mean, I don't know who those 24 is. I've heard it postulated so many times, all I could come to is I don't know. But I tell you what, they're men that know how to praise God. Mm -hmm. And they said, Hallelujah. You're, you're better than anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, you're the greatest that ever has been and ever will be. Hallelujah. We need to get back to that, do we not? <coughs> do we, you know, uh, what have the Pentecostals taken from us? This right here. And the voice, verse 5, and a voice came out of the throne, that is the very throne, throne of God, saying, Praise our God. That's a command from the Almighty, right? If he's on the throne and it comes out of the throne, it issues from the throne. It's a directive from the Almighty God saying, You praise me. And listen, you know what? Have you, under, have you ever, and I've noticed this down through the years, that uh, and the Lord's people always seemingly has food to eat and stuff like that. But listen, there's no Corvettes out there, is there? You, you know, I, I think we are those people that, that just get by so we don't get hung up in that mess. <clears throat> and we can say, hallelujah. You know what? Uh, light bill's going to be coming around again. But we'll try to pay it. And I don't have to get so hung up on maintaining other riches that I can say, hallelujah. That, that, and, and so I, that's just extra, and you can take it and study it out. But I believe that's why the Lord Jesus said, hardly can a rich man enter into heaven, because he's caught up on those things, and he can't praise him in a good and a proper way. And a voice came out of heaven saying, Praise our God, all you servants, every one of you, men and women, uh, the same, the whole, the whole group, and that you fear him. Now I think that is one element 
that that limits our praise is we really don't fear him. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, most churches don't even teach that. And again, I use that loosely, but I mean some sound churches don't teach that. I, I'm fearful of the Almighty. Amen. If he tells me uh, to do something and I don't follow through, uh, you know, I feel like I'm in for trouble. That's right. Amen, bro. That, that's how you be fearful of him. You know what? In, in, in 27 years of nursing, I've seen this. He gives diseases and he takes them away. That makes me fearful. Right. Because he could knock me down tomorrow. And you know what if he did? If, if I went to the doctor and Chris had told me I was eat up for can with cancer, he'd be just and right. Mm -hmm. Something in that would be praiseworthy, would it not? And, 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 and so we see then... What we need to understand, if we're going to praise Him in the right way, we have to set religion aside. The great whore has to be set aside. Religion in Baptist churches has to be set aside. And the glory of God must become the center of what they do. That's right. And then we need to be fearful. You know what? If we get down to the point we're fearful not to, we will. Right? And, 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 you know, unfortunately, the, the nature of man in this flesh, that's pretty much what we have to do, is be fearful. I told you many times about getting in the backwater and pretending to be Charles Ingalls and Mom jerking me out of there, and I still got a big scar on this leg. But you know what? I never got in that backwater again because I was afraid to. And, and, and so we see then... Huh, we need to be fearful to the point that we praise him for what he said, what he does. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude. They're right now, they're fearful now. Uh, religion has been put aside. And I heard a, and I heard, as it were, a voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, and the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Now I want you to see this multitude that speaks in a voice that sounds like many waters. I've heard that to say various languages. I don't know really what it is. But you know what? A good set of flood waters can praise God too. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I, I've been blessed enough to see the ocean more than once. You cast your glaze and see water as far as you can see. You know, that's glorifying. I've seen one of the Great Lakes. It, it, it's the same way. You can't see the end of it. But yet, it's still what separates it, if I wanted to, and I did, uh, scoop it up and drink it because it's good fresh water. That's amazing, ain't it? Make one salty as brine and make the other fresh enough to drink. That's the Almighty. And, and so we find the end. <laughs> We, whatever's praising him is doing it right. The, the, the created beings, us, are praising him. The, the elements are praising because we at least see the mighty thunderings. And they're saying hallelujah. Now, can you imagine the Cumberland River lifting its voice and saying hallelujah? You know what? I believe it could happen, don't you? He said, if we had faith, we could say to that mountain, get the hands. Mm -hmm. That's praiseworthy. If you really see it and really believe it, that the, uh, the mountains in East Tennessee can become a plain. Listen, you're praise it. Uh, Sarah's going up there next week, so don't do it anytime soon. But... It's, it, it's, it's real, isn't it? If you believe him, it, it, he's able. He, he's one that can do it. And that's very, very praiseworthy. So I ask you, in lieu of all that, when do you praise him? How have you praised him? What are you doing to praise him even now? Now, look with me uh, in Hebrews. Uh, I don't know who the writer is. I personally think it was Paul. Um, I think he was writing to that church in Jerusalem. And they got a little self-righteous at times. They got a little Jewy. 
right? Thought that they were a little bit better than the Gentile believers. And they had to be corrected for it. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Hebrews 13 and verse 12, the Bible says, Wherefore, Jesus also, he, he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Outside Jerusalem, he, he, he was the uh, payment for our sin. He, he did everything possible. He poured out our redemption. He poured out his blood to buy us back from sin. In lieu of that, let us go therefore unto him without the camp bearing the reproach. For here, for here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Let him therefore let us offering. By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Now, I, I love how uh, the Word of God is here because it calls it, it calls it, it names it as a sacrifice of praise. Um, something that's being offered. Something, something that cost you something. That's what the, the key of the sacrifice in the Old Testament was, is they cost you something. You know what? Real praise is going to cost you something. Praying at work over your food. I've done it for years. Uh, I don't want to take it and be under the dietary law. Do you? The stuff I eat wasn't under the dietary law. <laughs> so I need to bless it, right? Mm -hmm. Give him praise. It, it's a sacrifice. If you're if you're reading your Bible at work and I read my Bible on my phone sometime and, and, and during lunchtime sometimes I do different things. Sometimes I answer emails and switching through there on your Bible and see something good. Well, glory to God. I've never seen that before. How many of you would be would I be able to do that? Sure. And, and, and that's where we ought to be, right? That's a sacrifice and of praise. Taking your own humility, taking what might other way, will other ways be uh, be uh, embarrassing, and put it over there before the Lord. Another sacrifice of praise. And listen, church, it's coming, and it's a lot closer than we thought before. When you can't get any food because you praise the Lord, what are you going to do? Listen, you, you better get ready. I don't know. Maybe that's why all these years I had to wear suspenders. I wouldn't have to tighten my belt. Because it's coming. Mm. Uh, me and Donna talking about the other night. Uh, last night, uh, we was in Clarksville. Cheapest gas we could find, three nineteen a gallon. And that's for the cheap stuff. It'll be soon that all I can do is drive to work and buy groceries. It's coming. And, and so it's easy to praise the Lord now, but when it's illegal to speak the name of Christ, to speak the name of Jesus, where will we be at then? And, and so uh, the writer here says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That, that's no end of the time measure. That's doing it all the time. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. You know what? This morning, if you're a saved person, if you can't say nothing else, thank you, Jesus, for, for saving my soul. I was helpless. I, I had no hope. I had nothing to do. And you saved me. Man, what, what, what? He says, if you don't have nothing else, do that. Verse 16. Uh, but to do good... And to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifice, God is well pleased. Do good. You know, at times I have an issue with that. Uh, you know, and, and shame on me, but at least I realize that since my brain surgery back in the uh, 90s, my fuse is about that long. And, you know, that's not a good thing. But see, I'm aware of it. So then I could do something about it if I want to, right? Mm -hmm. 
you know, when, when I'm getting out of line, this is always what I've done with the children and everything, if I, I'm saying too much. <clears throat> and that's how she gets my attention. It ain't because she's got allergies. It's because I've said too much. You know, uh, when we adopted Bella, I had to have a copy of her original. And uh, I went out here to the health department to get it. And this woman opposed me a little bit. I'm not gonna get into details. But I came back out with the birth certificate. And Donna's first question is, what did you do? Mm -hmm. And because she knew I was angry. And probably, and I, I, I'm not out of line. I'm sure I did, at least I can admit it. But what if I had to go to that woman now and tell her of the goodness of Christ? You think she's going to listen to me? Probably not, right? And, 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 and so we find then that it has to extend into our, our talking and our relationships and our passing by with other people. We have to give him glory even then. Uh, Second Peter, uh, you know, I personally believe that he was pastor of First Baptist Jerusalem. And uh, in First Peter chapter 2, uh, he writing to his own church and to others, he says, we are a chosen generation. We believe that, we, don't we? That, that, is, that is divine election in, in one portion of the sentence. We are a chosen generation, a royal people priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. What about, are, are we that? You, you know, uh, when people walk away after commu communicating with you, maybe first time me, and they walk away and go, man, he was strange. That's a peculiar people, isn't it? And you know what that does, if you do it in the right, right way, they want to talk to you again. What was she talking about? I'm going to go, I hope I bump into her again at Frank's. I'm going to see what she's all about. You know, dressing right for the right reasons. Right? Mm -hmm. Not because you can be seen by everybody. You know, Ooh, I've had more short britches in 30 years. Good for Larry. No, no. But when someone comes out to you and says, Larry, it is hot, it's blue blazes out here, why are you wearing that? I'm telling him the goodness of God. I'm telling him, I can tell him what he did for me. See, not, not to pat self on the back, and that is the problem. That's where it does get in the way, but because of the goodness of God. And I, I can tell him this is why I do it, because he saved me and made something different out of me and made me peculiar or strange in the world's eyes. Now notice this, that you may shew forth his praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And, and so the way that I take that is if you're not doing this, if you're not a peculiar people, you can't praise him. Right? Follow the text of that sentence, right? That you may. You do this because it gives you the ability to give you uh, the, the authority to praise Him like you should. So I often wonder, how often does that get in our way uh, that it obstructs praise, that it interferes with what you really want to say to Him? I would say very often, probably. And, and, and you know what? And, and most of the time, we're not even aware of it. We're, we're not even uh, sensitive enough to the Spirit to see what the problem is. Last place, uh, 1 Peter again, this time chapter 4, verses, verses 7 through 11. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Man, we've been preaching that a long time, haven't we? 2,000 plus years now. Paul believed it. But the end of all things is at hand. Be, there, be therefore sober or serious and watch. I love that. Watch unto prayer. Lord, help me understand this. You see the catastrophe that's around us. 
Why is Biden in the White House? Help me understand that. Help me to know your, your, your goodness, your praiseworthiness in that happening. Help me to understand that. That's, we need to, we need to keep a, a good eye out. For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to the God, to God in the spirit. The end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober. Be therefore, uh, I'm sorry, drop down to verse 9. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. You know, that's sometimes a difficult thing to do, isn't it? Uh, me and Donna, this, Donna and the girls are going part of the time with us up out to Missouri, and then they're coming back. And cause, But you know who's going to take care of us? A couple. One of them's 85 and one of them's 86. Ask us into their home. Going to provide our meals for us. Going to... Gonna, be sure we have everything we need. You know what? I'm almost embarrassed to go into them. It's Clarissa's mom and dad. And she's the baby. <laughs> she's their youngest child. Both of them born, one of them born in 36, one of them born in 35. And open their home to the fam to God's man and his family. That's remarkable, isn't it? Man. I don't even know if I'll be able to turn the door knob at 85. Huh. Mm -hmm. That's good, isn't it? I, be I believe that's what this scripture is talking about. That that's praiseworthy. It goes beyond hallelujah and how you treat God's people. That's just as praiseworthy. It's just as honoring as anything else. Verse 10. As every man have received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. What is your gift? I think we have to answer that if we want to be praiseworthy, don't you? I can preach a little bit, so I'm going to try to use that for God. I know a little bit about health care, so I'm going to direct it my brothers and sisters in Christ the best I can. That's about the end of my gifts, but I better use them. Right? Donna can cook any kind of bread you want. She better use it. She can play the piano. She better use it. You know what I have found? When you don't use it, you lose it. Because if you're not going to praise Him for it, why would He give you that to start with? Remember, remember the Lord Jesus Christ said some 30, some 60, and some 100. It's all in how they used it. It was a none. And that will be your life too. Uh, your happiness, your praise ability is directly tied to your service. Verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God, the word of God. If any man minister, let him do of the ability which God giveth which God gives. Now, let me let me break here and remind you of this. Ministry is not excluded to preaching. Preaching is preaching. Ministry, whatever gift you have, use it. Remember when Paul was called, what he said about him in Acts 13, that they were praying in ministry. Whatever you're able to do, do it. But listen to this, do it to the glory of God. And if you can't do it in that way, don't do it. Because in my opinion, then it becomes blasphemy. Right? You're doing it for yourself. And, and, and so we see then, as the Lord's people, that we've got to start praising Him more and praising Him in the right way. The rest of the verse, let Him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things might be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We, we need to praise Him. We need to praise Him in the right way. We need to lift Him up without pride. 
We need, we need to lift him up without haughtiness. We need to lift him up in his goodness for what he's done for us. Whatever, whatever, whatever ability use it. You know, I, I always think about this thing as Paul is about ready to be done with his earthly ministry. He writes to Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. He also writes to him, rebuke, reprove, rebuke, exhort. Mm -hmm. Those, those are, all those can be praiseworthy if you do them in the right way. I want you to see that two thirds of Timothy's ministry was going to be about correcting people. That's hard, is it not? Yeah. You two young preachers, in there, <clears throat> you're going to get opportunities for you to do that. And it's very difficult. It's very difficult. And you know why it's difficult? Doing it in the right way. I mean, you can say it. I, I'm saying, get that hair cut off. You look like a, you look like a hippie. Or I can take the Bible and say, now, brother, in 1 Corinthians 11, this is what the Word of God teaches. And you know what? Leave it there. Man, we, right. we, believe, we believe in the gospel of preaching it and leaving it there. Ain't that more we can do? But what about the other precious truths of the Word of God? You going to browbeat them or just teach them and see what God will do with it? That's a whole lot better. You know what? If I convince you of something, it'll be gone eventually. But if God convinces you of something, it will never be gone. Right. And that's what we need.